So my, my Jupiter at night, we're before an internet audience presented live. And them good old boys are in the chat room tonight, singing this is Jupiter at night. This is Jupiter at night. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Hey, J-Man. Hi. I just wanted to spice it up at the last second there because I figured the folks were at least expecting it. Okay. Tonight's episode actually is kicking off a whole series this week. We theme won- week. Theme week. <laughs> yeah, if we had a production budget, we'd have an awesome bump for our theme. So mm-hmm. imagine for a second. Close the- your eyes for just a second. I'll yeah. sing you th- some theme music, okay? You okay, ready? go, go. <laughs> Okay, open your eyes. All right. So uh, tonight is we're looking towards the future of what? Well, what would you? How would you? What? J man, go. This is a kind of future technology that will fundamentally alter the way that we deal with the world around us. Oh, I like that. How's I that like for a that. Pitch? And so I thought tonight we'd start with uh, how we're going to handle things like mobile payments in the future. And here's an interesting thing to think about. It seems like the devices we're carrying are going to become fewer and fewer and more and more important. Well, not just that. Like there was a, a quote, and I forget where it was from. Oh, J man. Like an anthropology professor or something. Whoa. Everything's okay, our okay. lightning just changed. We just had a, we just had a situation in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so a quote from an anthropology professor that said like 10 years ago, I would every, go fix everybody, that. Keep going. everybody in the world carried around wallet, watch, and keys. Okay, right? Yeah. 10 years ago, do you remember that? Yeah. Wallet, keys, and watch. Who wears a watch anymore, right? No. Nobody does. Because no. these days, you carry around your wallet, your keys, and your phone. Yeah, I've got a smartphone, but I haven't pretty much since I got a cell phone, I, I quit carrying a watch. Right. Yeah. So the prediction, though, is that in 10 years' time from now, yeah. everybody will be carrying around a phone. It's true. And that's it. Oh, because there's rumors of things like NFC being used to do online payments via your phone, so you don't need your wallet. Why would and, you? And, of course, if you had these kind of identification chips in your phones and things like that, you really wouldn't need keys to unlock doors. And you could have it linked up to your ID information as well, so you wouldn't even need like your driver's license carried on you at any time. Folks, let's go down a little path here. This comes from a series of stories, and we're going to fill in some of the de- details for you. Can- coming out today on May 17th, 2011, Boy Genius ran a report saying that Apple's about to retrofit their Apple stores with NFC payment systems. Now, uh, Boy Genius doesn't really have the best track record with this no. kind of stuff. In fact, it's funny because yesterday, the day before this came out, uh, Business Insider ran a story saying that the next iPhone will not have NFC payments. Well, to be fair, that was one of the reasons that this did seem to be a big deal was because it was directly yeah. in contradiction yeah. to their previous statement. Now, the whole idea of being able to take your smartphone, swipe it across something and make payments isn't unique to just the cell phone boys either. Actually, uh, not only is it just Apple, but it's Google. Yeah. And Google in fact, has been... as we covered last week on Google I.O., I don't know if we talked too much about the NFC, but it did show up yeah. on their keynote. They yeah. had several um, panels about it. Now, primarily to control external devices, but if you've got NFC in your phones, it can do all sorts of other well, they've stuff got as a well. Whole, they've got a whole payment infrastructure set up for it, and they've got the whole Google checkout backend system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Google's ready to roll on this. In fact, they even just recently back in May hired, uh, back in the beginning of May, hired uh, a new uh, PR manager to come in and help sort of grease the wheels of customer adoption of the Google NFC payment system. Interesting. The problem is it's, they're limited by hardware right now. I think the only thing shipping with it is like the Nexus S. I think that's right. So that's pretty limited in terms of consumer adoption. Well, but a new Android device comes out every three hours. So That's true, but some of the new ones that have come out recently have not included NFC. Hmm. So, in fact, I don't... Maybe that PR marketer needs to do the push on yeah, the manufacturer yeah. side. Well, it's uh, they need to get their game uh, stepped up because it's not just Google and Apple. Also, Visa is getting in on the action. And, and Visa is coming up with a new electronic payment system where you can wirelessly pay by your iPad or whatever, supposedly. Okay, now let me break this down to you because, okay, having Apple on board would be neat. They have a big controlling interest in the mobile market. Cool. Having Google on board would be neat because they already have some of the infrastructure behind that. When you say neat, do you mean freaky scary? Well, yeah, of course, okay, obviously. Okay, yeah. But also a little bit like we're living in the future sort of neat. <laughs> that is neat, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, having Visa on board means this is going to happen. Yeah. Because they control it all. Actually, I mean, well, not all, but most you, of it. If you look at the beginning of this video here, I'll, I'll uh, zoom and pause. Um the presentation is, 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 is intended for illustrative purposes only. It contains depictions of products currently in the process of deployment. 
deployment, not development or conceptualizing, but actually being shipped. In, yeah, they're actually shipping this thing out. Yeah, they're shipping it out to stores. Um, now, uh, I guess the chat room tells me that this is sort of similar to a technology that's already in use in Japan. And the way it mm -hmm. works in Japan is that they sort of pre-charge an account that's, char that's, that's associated with this payment. And it's not like you walk around and it's transmitting payment information all the time. No. You fire up the, the app on the smartphone, which is mm -hmm. tied to a prepaid account, and then make the payment. Which is smart, because I think one of the primary concerns a lot of people would have with this sort of technology is theft. Snooping or something, yeah. Yeah, and you know, if somebody then steals your phone, wouldn't they have access to all your stuff and everything? But if you're using prepaid accounts where you only keep a small portion of your cash in that account... Then you're actually kind of better off than if somebody stole your wallet. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm not, like, trying to be a proponent. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate right. here because initially I'm like, I don't like this at all. That's what we do on the show. We look at all of the angles. We do. We're an angle looker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also think it'd be kind of cool to be able to roll down, like, at the ball game and just buy a hot dog and a beer with my phone and not have to carry anything else in my cargo... Yeah. Uh, um, and the concept shorts, isn't brand shorts. new. I mean, like, there's, there's a big arcade in downtown Seattle called GameWorks, where when you walk in the door, you plop down your money or your credit card to the guy at the front desk, and you buy a prepaid account. Oh, sure, yeah. You don't use your cash. You don't use quarters anymore in the machines. Yeah. You buy a card, and it's got and it's a prepaid account, and you use a card on the machines. Now, uh, I, I guess I do kind of wonder if this is corporations trying to solve a problem that I don't really feel like needs solving. Or is that just old man Chris sitting on his porch and somebody's on his lawn right now? I can't quite... I don't know if that's... I think, actually, it's equal parts, yeah. in a way. Yeah. I mean, because a lot of people... We've got people in the chat room that are like, okay, first of all, Rogue Guy said late, uh, earlier on when I was talking about watches, he said, the day I stop wearing a watch is the day that you pry it off my cold, dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's some hardcore So, I mean, fans. people, like, they have traditions. They follow things. So yeah. And there's a lot of people in the chat room that will never give up on using cash so that they can control their spending... And it's a it's a hard currency. You can't you don't risk electronic bungles or identity theft or anything like that. Uh, Rogue Ice rolls in and uh, confirms with me. He says, "I do think it's a solution in search of a problem. And I think that's the best way to put it because I agree with that. Um, yeah. I I think it's a I think it's an attempt to make buying things easier, which is not necessarily yeah. bad. But they not that it's hard now, but like honestly, because it's so easy to buy apps, I probably buy more apps than I should. Because it's like done right." Actually, the same is on Amazon.com. I true. actually have a link to an article that I'll, I'll try to remember to put in our show notes that's saying that exact same thing, is that oh, digital really? wallets, that, which is what a lot of people are calling this new system, could lead to overspending and economic crisis of a sort. Oh, where I, people, I mean, if two, people, too many people overspend beyond their means, it could potentially impact the, the economy on a whole. You mean like the exact situation we're in right now already? Exactly. <laughs> so, well, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. What about what about not always using it for money purposes? What about like uh, here's an example of what was happening at Google I/O. The Foursquare guys were using NFC to check in, mm -hmm. so you'd walk up to a, uh, a poster on the wall that had an NFC chip embedded in it, and you'd swipe your Nexus S, and it would automatically check you in on Foursquare at Google I/O. Google's already also been using this for their service called Google Places. Oh yeah. If you have an NFC phone, so the one phone that out there that can do this right now you can you can use it on these stickers that are in certain restaurants and stuff like that and when you scan it with your phone uh, it Jeremy, gives you a whole review they're and not uh stickers they are decals right huge difference so please get that straight my yeah. bad uh, so you get the information exactly you get the information that would be like on google maps like the reviews and stuff like that but now you brought up earlier what's the difference between this and just scanning a qr code it's Easy? easier you know, the you QR don't code, you, gotta, your, you don't have to load your camera. No, you still have to load an NFC reader. Oh. But, you you know, the, this you have to line up with the, Q, with the QR code. you got to line it up just Hope so. Hope there's not a glare on the window. But, you know, the new, the new QR apps, like like on my Evo, dude, I just beep, beep, and it gets it. Like, it's like not even an effort. Hmm. So, I don't know. They're getting a lot better. So, so, again, maybe a solution in search of a problem. Now, here's an area where NFC could come in for gaming. We talked a little bit about this on the pre-show, which, by the way, you should watch this show live because we do a lot more show. Uh, actually, the J-Man's been out here since uh, 6 p.m., and it's 8 p.m. where we're shooting 5 this 5.30, technically. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So jblive.tv is where we do this show, and it's it's interesting because on the, on the live show, uh, pre-show, we were talking about gaming mm -hmm. and how right now sometimes it can be a little rough if you, if, if you need to multiplayer with somebody. Like if you have two tablets and you're on a Wi-Fi connection, you can generally hook up just fine. But if there's not existing not an existing Wi-Fi infrastructure for you to connect to, mm -hmm. and that's actually the term, an infrastructure, uh, then you would do like possibly a Bluetooth connection, but there's a lot of overhead with Bluetooth. With Bluetooth is a little clunky. It's, yeah, it's clunky, mm. exactly. Whereas, but NFC, 
if the app started up and then turned on your NFC uh, transmitter and receiver and you could just sort of NFC up, mm-hmm. and get all near fieldy. Or even just to use that as an initial setup that then sends the Bluetooth right. info to yeah, each other. Yeah, I think that's what they'd have to do because you can't, you know, NFC is super basic. Yeah, it's and, really and real. It, there's a reason they call it near field. It's yeah. very short wave. You got to be up in that field yeah. when you're communicating. Yeah. But I could see it making awesome for gaming. The other thing I could see it being cool like is on next generation consoles. You take your controller up to the console and you put it on the NFC spot and they automatically pair with the console, mm-hmm. you know, and then that wireless controller knows that it works with that thing. Right. Yeah, that could be cool. Yeah. Or heck, you could do that even with computer devices. And well, and like I mentioned, they did show it off on uh, a, an audio system at Google I.O. where they took a phone and they scanned it in front of a thing and it uploaded all the music that was on oh. that to a stereo system. Just yeah, I bet it didn't upload their music. I bet it just like, no, transferred no, the information. No, you're right. It actually set up their playlist. Yeah, yeah. Like this did, is the is idea very, of what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then from there, they could also then use the the device after they took it away. So it probably set up a Bluetooth connection or something to change volume and, and scroll oh, cool. through the music. And oh, stuff really? Like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So it's it's got a lot of potential. A I lot of people are getting a little scared about the, the security features and identity theft. And what if they mm-hmm. find take my phone? Mm-hmm. Do I lose my life? Mm-hmm. You know, and... Those are concerns, but is there's there's uh, my phone and the iPhone, um, and depending on who makes your Android phone, this may or may not be a feature that you have. But uh, some of them have a total remote wipe, so I can log into a website and I can press a button and it it does a format of my phone. So if you know you've lost your phone, you yeah. can just go to a web terminal somewhere. And I can't really do that with my wallet. In fact, I've had my credit card stolen before, and mm-hmm. you know I had to go through and it was a debit credit card, and I had to go through and get a whole new account number. Yeah, I mean it was a major major thing for me to have to go through. I worked at a movie theater in high school yeah. for, I think, only about six months. Found four wallets over the course of those six months left in movie theaters. Did you get any cash? I'm not going to disclose that you information. You got some cash! <laughs> Jeremy! I was in high school. Did you buy popcorn with it, or did you get popcorn for free? I didn't get popcorn for free. Oh, give me I a know. break. You believe that? No wonder I don't work there anymore, right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> So I I would say there is even potentially if you have a setup like that less risk again, yeah. uh, but it's it does set up my spider sense so I'm not trying to be like Mister Let's do everything wirelessly but I'm just kind of thinking through it. And it doesn't seem to think about this though. Think about the future, like the kind of future that you see in sci-fi movies where you know the walls are talking to you and you've got wireless communication okay. everywhere and everything right. like that. All right. Wouldn't it make sense in that future to have a single point device that you carry around? That has the capability of managing your entire life. Yeah. I mean, in that future, it makes perfect sense. The fears of getting to that future are the fears of today. And I think that by the time that we get to the point where this is a viable solution. We'll work some of that stuff out. Those will be addressed along the way. That'd be great. Yeah. That would be ideal. That's awfully optimistic, though. Or we're all going to be tied to Visa or Google Checkout for the rest of our lives. Well, and by that point, we might already be slaves to an alien race and or the robot invasion. So Yeah, I mean, this is pre-2012 you're mm-hmm. talking, so mm-hmm. eh, they better snap this It's all up. kind of up in the air at this yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, really, it could just be end of days, and then it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So don't get all worked up, people. <laughs> uh, I, I guess, you know, it kind of people also associate with RFID, and I don't know the technical differences, but I'll tell you. From a geek standpoint, something I've been following very loosely, and I'd love for somebody to educate me more on. More on. <laughs> see what I did there? Oh, yeah. Um, is <laughs> I'd love to learn more about Bitcoin, and then I could see the possibilities of having Bitcoin, because you can carry your Bitcoins on your phone, and Bitcoin's like this alternative online currency that's entirely digital. Entirely digital, and right now, one Bitcoin is like worth seven and a half US dollars. Well, that's not too impressive. The dollar kind of yeah, sucks but right it's, now. <laughs> still, it's interesting. So if you could collect... So that's like 30 cents in Canadian, right? I, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Uh, you can, but you can generate, you can self-generate Bitcoins. It takes a long time, but you can self-generate them and then you can store Using them. Using idle CPUs. Yeah, yeah, and then you can store them on your cell phone. Mm-hmm. So you combine that with NFC, you could, you know, pay for something with Bitcoins. That'd be pretty neat. Mm-hmm. I can see that. But maybe I'm just dreaming. I don't know. But I, all sorts of possibilities. I think the point to take away from all this is that it, it's uh, interesting technology that some of the biggest players in the market are appear to be embracing. Mm. So uh, we might just have to prepare ourselves to adapt to it. I agree. It might, it might just be the way things are going. Mm-hmm. And it'll all be stored in the cloud. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> all right. So next episode, we've got all kinds of more looks ahead of things that will be shaping the very way we interact with interact with technology we forever. Are, we already have some ideas of our own, but it wouldn't oh. be a bad idea to hear some of yours. If you've got yeah. some good links to share with us or anything, leave yeah. a comment wherever you're at, or you can head over to the Jupiter Colony, our forum. Or your thoughts on NFC and paying wirelessly. Mm-hmm. 
and digital and, wallets. And keep in mind, I think with keep in mind in the conversation, I think it'd be interesting to just kind of maybe we'll just all work under this assumption that it'd be like a prepaid balance. So you could say I only want a hundred dollars on this sure. on this payment thing. So if somebody did take it or hack it, you'd only be out like whatever you prepaid. Mm -hmm. So I think that might limit the risk. I think that's what Visa's talking about. And I'd like to know what you guys think of that whole scenario. Yeah. So share those thoughts with us. And like I mentioned earlier, you could always join us live and see people in the chat room right now are telling us what they think. And boy, is it something. Look at all that. And so you could join us live at jblive.tv and join in the fun and find out when all of our shows are live over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar. If you're a tech geek, go check out the latest episode of TechSnap. Alan shares an IT war story that's pretty interesting when a whole data center went down on. Mm -hmm. And the J-Man's got the morgue out. I do. My new MMO show. We launched uh, this last Saturday to a great critical acclaim. Actually, we <laughs> have gotten a great response, so thanks, everyone. And if you're an MMO fan or if you're curious about what's going on in the MMO industry and big things that are happening, go check out the morgue. Mm -hmm. You can find that over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. All right, everyone. Well, I think that wraps up tonight's episode, and we'll see you tomorrow night.